In section 7.1, we're looking at rational functions and simplifying rational expressions. Our objectives are to find the domain of a rational function, simplify or write rational expressions in lowest terms, write equivalent rational expressions of the form negative a over b, which is equal to negative a over b, or a divided by negative b, and to use rational functions in applications. Find the domain of each rational expression. To find the domain, you want to look at all the x values except for any x value that would make the denominator equal to 0. In the first example, f of x is equal to the quantity 2 plus 3x all divided by 4. In this case, we could say that the domain is all real numbers. And one way to write that using set notation is to use squiggly brackets where this so the domain are all the x values such that that vertical line represents such that x is a real number remember that the domain is a set of all the input values using the acronym d i x where d is for domain i is for inputs x is for the x values and the range is r o y range is the output or the y values. In example b, we have g of x is equal to negative the quantity of 6x plus x squared in the numerator over 5x in the denominator. We want to be very careful about the domain in terms of what are the possible x values that would make the denominator equal to 0. So by looking in the denominator, we could say that the denominator 5x cannot equal 0. So that means x cannot equal 0. So we can write our domain is everything except for 0. And using set notation we can say the domain is a set of all the numbers x and there's an infinite number of them. You can plug in 1 and 2 and negative 1, negative 2. There's an infinite number of values of x that do work. So we can say x the domain is x such that x is a real number and x cannot equal 0. So everything except 0. In the next example, p of x equals negative 9 in the numerator over 7x plus 5 in the denominator. So the domain is going to be all real numbers except for any x value that would make the denominator equal to 0. So we can say that the denominator, 7x plus 5, cannot equal 0. And you can solve this like you're solving an equation, getting the x by itself. We can subtract 5 from both sides, and then the inequality becomes 7x cannot equal negative 5. And then by dividing both sides by 7, we can say that x cannot equal negative 5 over 7 but it could equal any other value except for negative 5 over 7. So writing that in set notation, we can say the domain is x such that x is a real number and, and x does not equal negative 5 over 7. Okay. In looking at example e, our function f of x is equal to x in the numerator divided by 2x squared plus x minus 3 in the denominator. So we want to say the domain is all the real numbers except for any possible x that would make the denominator equal to 0. So if we set that denominator 2x squared plus x minus 3 and say that it cannot equal 0. And then we can solve this equation. It's a quadratic equation. It's a trinomial and it could be solved by factoring. You may want to go back and review the factoring techniques from the previous chapter. Um, and work to come up with the factors and you'll see that the factors are going to be 2x plus 3 and the other factor is x minus 1. So in factor form we say the 2x plus 3 and x minus 1 cannot equal 0. Then we can set it up as using that zero factor property and say that the first factor cannot equal 0 and the second factor cannot equal 0. And then we can solve each one of these. We can subtract 3 from both sides 
and get 2x cannot equal a negative 3, which means that x cannot equal a negative 3 over 2. And then by adding 1 to both sides of the second factor set not equal to 0, we get x cannot equal positive 1. So x can be any other value except for negative 3 over 2 and 1. And you can write that answer using set notation. Say the domain is the x, all the x values such that x is a real number and x cannot equal, should be a not equal sign, negative 3 over 2 or x cannot equal 1. In these examples, we're simplifying each rational expression. So just be very careful here. And the only time you can cross out in terms in a rational expression is if you have a common factor in the numerator and the denominator. You cannot cross out anything if it's next to a plus or minus sign. So one big mistake that I see a lot of students do is in example A, where you have 2x squared minus 6x in the numerator and 2x in the denominator, is to cross out those two x's. Now that's the that's a mistake. You don't want to do that. You cannot cross out anything if it's next to a plus or a minus sign. So the best thing to do here is that you can cross out common factors. You can divide out those common factors. So it has to be multiplied together. If it's next to a multiplication, then you can uh, divide out those common factors. So we're going to factor the numerator. When you factor the numerator, the GCF of the numerator is 2x. and when you factor out 2x, you're left with x minus 3. And the denominator was 2x. So we have these common factors. We have a 2x factor in the numerator and a 2x factor in the denominator. Because that's a common factor in the numerator and the denominator, you can divide those out and simplify the expression by saying that this is equivalent to x minus 3. So the, exp the rational expression is simplified to x minus 3. Let's do the same thing for example b. We have in the numerator x squared minus 81 divided by 9 plus x. You can't cross out anything because it's so far all these terms are next to a plus or minus sign, but we can factor. You must factor here in order to simplify. In the numerator, notice that it's a difference of two squares. Remember that if, the fact, if a binomial is in the form of a squared minus b squared, then the factors are a plus b and a minus b. So the numerator is in that form, and we can write the factors as x plus 9 and x minus 9 in the numerator. And in the denominator, 9, nine plus x can also be written as x plus 9. Now you can only divide out common factors. And x plus 9 is a factor in the numerator and the denominator, so it can be simplified so that our final answer is x minus 9. So that rational expression can be simplified to x minus 9. In example D, we have x minus 8 in the numerator and 8 minus x in the denominator. Now this is, follows a special pattern that you may see often in these types of questions. In fact, anytime you have a rational expression that's in the form of like an a minus b in the numerator and a b minus a in the denominator, this can also can be simplified to negative 1. And let me show you why that happens. In the numerator, we have a minus b. In the denominator, if we rearrange the terms b minus a, that's the same thing as negative a plus b. But we can factor out a negative in the denominator and get a minus b in the numerator, factoring out that negative in the denominator, and you get a minus b. And then this can be simplified since we have a common factor in the numerator and the denominator. Those common factors will divide out, so you would end up with a 1 over negative 1 which is equal to negative 1. So anytime you have these factors that are in this form, a minus b over b minus a, that can be simplified to negative 1. You can also um, consider this using number values so you get a sense of that this is actually true. It just doesn't, you know, it's just not 
letters that work out that way, even numbers will simplify in that form. For example, if you have, say, 3 minus 8 over 8 minus 3, well, 3 minus 8 in the numerator would be negative 5, and 8 minus 3 in the denominator is 5. So that's going to be negative 5 divided by 5, which is negative 1. So this is something good to remember. Anytime you have factors of this form, a minus b over b minus a, that's going to equal negative 1. So example d, x minus 8 over 8 minus x, we can say is negative 1. Or you can work through and rewrite the denominator as negative x plus 8, and then factor the denominator, factor out that negative to make it negative times the quantity x minus 8, and then these common factors will divide out, and you'll, you will get 1 over negative 1, which will simplify to negative 1. Let's look at example E. We want to simplify this rational expression, and we do that by factoring the numerator and the denominator. Again, you don't want to make this mistake of crossing those out, what they look like they have in common, but if it's next to a plus or a minus sign, that's a big mistake. You never want to cross out anything. So let's um, factor first, and then you can cross out any common factors. The numerator is a trinomial, which can be factored is y plus 3 and y plus 2. Again, we're looking at those factors of 6 that will add up to 5, and the factors are y plus 3 and y plus 2. And we want to go back again to chapter 6 and review those factoring techniques. And the denominator, y squared plus 10y plus 21, can be factored into y plus 7 and y plus 3. Factors of 21 that add up to 10 are 7 and 3. Now we can cross out any common factors. Since we see a factor of y plus 3 in the numerator and the denominator, we can simplify that, divide out those common factors, and then we can write our answer as what's left over, y plus 2 factor in the numerator over y plus 7 factor in the denominator. And that is our simplified form for that rational expression. A company's cost per book for printing x particular books is given by this rational function. Now, this model equation takes into consideration any fixed costs, which would be $5,000 of fixed costs, say $5,000 for the, um, the machines that are used to manufacture the books, and then 0.8x represents 80 cents worth of material cost, and then divided by x, that will give you your average cost. So let's find the cost, find the cost per book for printing 300 books. We are, we are evaluating this cost function for 300 books. And anytime we see an X, we're going to replace it with 300. So we get 0 0.8 times 300 plus 5,000 in the numerator over 300 in the denominator. So the 0 0.8 times 300 plus 5,000 is going to give us 5,240 because 0 0.8 times 300 is 240 in the numerator and 300 in the denominator. And then when we divide that out, we see that the cost per book of manufacturing uh, printing 300 books is $17.47. So that's kind of pretty expensive to, to print 300 books at a cost of $17.47. It's because the fixed costs are so high. Now, if we were to print 3,000 books, then we can evaluate the cost function using 3,000 as our input. So the cost per book for manufacturing 3,000 books is going to be 0 0.8 times 3,000 plus 5,000 in the numerator, all divided by 3,000. So that'll give us 7,400 in the numerator over 3,000 in the denominator. And then when we simplify that, we get $2.47. So when 
printing 3,000 books, the cost per book is $2.47, so your average cost goes down.